Lauren Elizabeth. If you're new here, welcome. I'm a pet and wildlife artist and an instructor, and I welcome you to this adorable fox fall painting. This is using acrylics. It's in between beginner and intermediate level. And also, I have opened my Etsy shop. Now, there's been some technical issues that came up, and so if you don't see the link in the description box, I'm still resolving it. But if you do, you can see it. I hope you like it. Going along with this back to school fall series that we're doing here on YouTube, I've felt so inspired. I have some Halloween fall paintings coming to my shop as well soon. But guys, without further ado, let's get painting this fox. All right, so like usual, I have the traceable link down below. And if you've never used it before, I have a video with instructions on how you transfer it to your paper or canvas. I'm using an eight by eight inch canvas panel by Arteza, and I'll quickly go through these colors. So I'm using cadmium yellow, phthalo cyanin blue, orange, permanent red, followed by yellow ochre, raw sienna, black, my fluid golden brand titanium white and violet all right so we're going to start with our green background we have the colors for our green phthalo blue which i'm going to grab a lot of we're going to keep it a darker green yes and then cadmium yellow that might have been a little too much blue so i'm going to just pull some aside and start mixing so cadmium yellow and phthalo blue. I'm gonna add in a little bit more cadmium yellow for a separate bit of green that will be lighter. So this is our first green. I always like to have a shade that I can like blend in that's lighter on one side, darker on the other. So I'm gonna pull aside some of this green we just made and grab some more cadmium yellow. Now our light source is hitting the right, so we're gonna have more of our dark values on the left. I'll have a lighter green shade on the right, darker green shade on the left. I'm using a palette knife, by the way. This is a heck of a lot easier than a regular brush when it comes to mixing colors. So I recommend it. And I'm gonna start with, yeah. I'll use my angle brush. This is my size 10 angle brush. I'm gonna make sure it's clean and damp. And I'm gonna dive into my, it's a lot easier to blend from light to dark. So I'm gonna start with my lighter color. So let's start with our light green. Now green is one of those acrylic colors that always seems to be transparent. I can never get away with just one layer of it. Even if I'm using heavy body green, it just seems so thin. So after this layer, when we blend our dark and light greens together, we're gonna let it dry for a little bit, then apply another layer over top, doing the exact same thing. So it's important that you keep these colors damp and that you have enough mixed up so we can add more layers. Now something that I'm teaching my daughter because it's so critical to be able to practice this when we're anxious or stressed or angry, it's to do deep breathing. 
So as we're working on what I call the warm-up phase, let's focus on the here and now with four deep breaths in through our noses and out through our mouths. Now, along with working with the body, doing deep breathing, I also like to do prayer and meditating on scripture as I'm painting. So today's inspiration is Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right, so here about halfway above the forehead, I'm gonna just immediately pull in that darker green. I didn't even wash up my brush. And I'm just gonna blend this carefully right above the fox head. Now, if you notice, I'm holding my brush at an angle as I blend that dark green into the lighter green. This helps to create a smooth blend. Now I did pull that dark green over a little further than I'd want it. So in a little bit, I'm going to grab more of that light green with a clean, damp brush and then blend it to the left. Now, if you also notice as I'm painting this background, I'm using the corner edge of my brush to cut into that traceable outline. Better to go over top that outline than have to remix colors and fill in any white later. Now, throughout this tutorial, you'll hear me say, make sure your brush is clean and damp. That just means you wash it out thoroughly in your cup of water, then you pat it on your cloth or paper towel so it's not sopping wet and so it's not completely dried, but you still have some moisture in your brush. This really helps us when it comes to blending. Also, I do like to keep a steady pace. I slow down parts of the footage so it's not too fast. I also don't like to get too caught up in details at the beginning. So however you like to work, just make sure to take your time, enjoy yourself, and at any point use the pause or play button on your screen. So here I go with my light green, blending that over top that line of dark green to create a nice smooth blend. Now Pet Portrait Commission season is upon us guys, getting ready for the holiday season. And if you'd like to improve your pet portraits in color, design, and your fur painting skills, I have what's called the Online Animal Art Masterclass. Here I share my 12-step 
pet portrait painting process so you can paint any cat or dog breed, even as a beginner. I have my pet portrait commission course showing you a low stress way to run the commission process. I've also recently completed my master animal fur video and ebook painting guide so you can create realistic pet and wildlife fur using acrylics. But the main reason I created this class is to take beginner and intermediate level creatives to masters of acrylic animal art while reducing stress, anxiety, depression, even addiction like I did seven years ago. This is what helps me manage stress on a daily basis, animal art therapy combined with my faith so if this would bless you or a friend, the brand new artist, all the way to the more advanced, I have links to this class in the description box below. But guys, let's get back to this fox. So while I let that background dry, I'm going to jump into these eyes with black. I'm just going to outline the eyes, fill in the pupils, outline the nose, and fill in the nostrils, as well as a little bit on the mouth just with black, and I'm gonna to switch to a very small brush, my size zero round brush. So make sure that detail brush is clean and damp. We're gonna use just black, starting with the eyes. All right, so next I'm going to outline the nose, I'm going to fill in the nostrils, outline that little indent in the center bottom of the nose, and then fill in that little black of the mouth. Now, if you need to do any touch-ups to your black around the eyes or nose or mouth, do that now. We're going to move back to our background because by now it should be dry or tacky, ready for us to richen up the forest green background layer so we have no more transparent areas. I'm going to go with a little bit smaller brush this time. This is my size 5 angle brush just so we have a thicker coat over top that background. Mm -hmm. 
In case you're wondering what paint I use, most of my colors are by Master's Touch from my favorite store, Hobby Lobby. I use a combination of the medium and heavy body Master's Touch paint. My second favorite brand is Liquidex. I get a lot of my fluorescent colors by Liquidex. Arteza, and then the white that I get is by Golden Brand. It's fluid titanium white. I don't use any other white now, but that one. I have links to my most used supplies, including my paints, in the description below. Next, I'm gonna go in with my size two Arteza Filbert brush, and I'm gonna create a gray. Lots of black, just a little bit amount of white. Now, once you create your dark gray, we're gonna fill in the insides of both ears over top those sketch lines, very generously. We want to create a strong base for when we layer those light gray strands over top this area. So we wanna have a lot of the white covered on the inside first and I'll already start creating that fur texture in this step. Now to get the angle of these lines right, I recommend that you watch me first and then try it. I always say work with what you know first. So I know that the fur is coming out on the innermost part of both ears. So that's the inside right side of the left ear and the inside left of the right ear. Those hairs are coming up and out at an angle but the hairs on the opposite outermost part of the inside of the ear. At the base, they're more vertical, but then they're angled more inward on both ears. Now to get a better look, I'll zoom in to this reference photo. So the inner ear hair kind of folds in like that. So this way on this side of the ear, that way on this left side of the ear, and the same way on the other ear. 
So that's how I'm trying to cut into that white. I don't want to bring it down too low. That might have been just a little too low. And we want this, uh, pretend there's like a nice curved line right here. That's where we want to bring that black down to. Now what I'm going to do is create a lighter medium gray. I'll just add more white to this and we're going to paint inside the ears. So we want a base for when we're applying the light strands, lighter colored strands over top. So I'll just pull in a lot more white. I want a medium to light colored gray. I'll use the same brush. I think this will work just fine. If it's more helpful, just paint. Oh, see, that's actually a little too dark. I'm going to add more white to that. I don't want it too dark. Even more white than that. See, on my paint palette, it looks, it looks very light. But then when you test it out, see, that's, a, that's the right gray. So don't be deceived by what you're seeing on your paint palette. So what might be helpful is just to outline around it and then we can go on with a round brush and start cutting into that dark gray. So I'm gonna let that dry that dark gray and work on the left ear so that they, that can dry. I'll work this gray underneath that curved line at the top of this left ear. And I'll stop about there. I won't work down around here because that's going to be our oranges and reds and browns. And now what I'll do, I'll put this in my water for a second. I'll go to my size one round brush, pick the same gray up. And like we want to pay attention to that angle. I'm just gonna carefully cluster lines inside there over top that dark gray. Now take your time here, but get ready to twist and turn that hand so you can get the angle correct of each line. And as we do that, we're trying to keep these lines thin, especially where it overlaps layers over top that dark gray. And if you mess up or you make your lines too thick, no biggie, just let it dry for a bit, mix up more of your dark gray and touch it up. Now let's repeat that exact same thing on the right ear. I've got my detail brush in hand, so I'm gonna jump straight in cutting over top that dark gray with those individual lines. Then I'll work out with this color and this brush, making sure I cover up those tester grays we applied when we were trying to find the correct gray.
we'll take this gray down a little bit further on this left side. But I'm not going to stop there with this gray. There is a line that we brought the gray up to. Well, I actually want to bring that up even further. I want to work above that line, over top the green background just slightly, and pull it down. And then right here, we have a little strip of the black, just like this side. I'm not going to go over that with this gray. Now I just see a bit of white that I left out on the inner ear, on the right ear. I just want to get that now before we move on to the next color. And you can do the same. Make sure there's no little white specks left over inside both ears. We want to create a base of, again, dark gray right here on the chest and to the left of the face. I want it a little bit darker than the gray we were just using. So I'll just mix up some more. And black with white, I want that a medium gray. So if you're unsure what a medium gray looks like, it's lighter than the dark gray we use to paint the inside of the ears, but darker than the light gray we applied for the inner ear hairs. Now because our light source is hitting so strongly on that right side, will only cluster these gray lines below the chin and to the left. So I'll even draw a line, a thick bold line below the chin and work down, leaving wide gaps between lines, keeping them about the same length and width. And it doesn't have to be perfect at all because we will be layering that light gray over top. And the fur is going like that along the chest. So we're working on this left side. That means we have to make these lines angled to the left. Okay. I'll lighten that up a little bit more, more for this side. Lighten up that gray. Now don't worry about clustering lines on this side. I then decide to just fill it in with this color. So this slightly lighter version of gray fill in this entire area to the left of the snout. But I will cluster lines like this over top this area, okay? Now we'll continue on with this value of gray a little bit into that chest, not all the way down, but a few strands layered over top that medium to dark gray. And again, these are lines that are about the same thickness, width, length, just clustering them together with some gaps in between. Now we still want a base on that right side, so I'm going to add lots more white to this so it's very light gray. Let's test it out. A little bit more white, and then I'll fill in this entire area. I will lift this gray up a little. I'll go over that sketch line. I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit more than the 
traceable line. And like we did here where we were ending with our lines clustered closely together, I'll do the same thing over top that green background. Hopefully your background is dry by now and you're not pulling any green into the light gray. That would be not good. Now I don't recommend pulling this down too far. We're gonna have to redo it anyway. Um, we are gonna be covering painting this and then going over this white part of the fox after that. So you don't have to worry about those strokes being perfect. We just wanna get to our, our sketch line. But as I move over here, just going to cut in over top some of those grays and call it quits for that light gray. Now this part of the fur, of the white fur, is getting a little bit more light. So I'm actually gonna add more black to this gray again. We'll just work some black straight into that. And we want it to be darker than that gray, but lighter than that one. But test it out and try your best to get it right there in between. So I think I got it. It might take a few tries and that's okay but I just wanna fill in this area. I'm still clustering lines, filling in more of that white, but cutting into some of those dark grays. See how I'm cutting over top that green background? I wanna carefully work this without going over all the dark gray, clustering lines sporadically so that that dark gray still shows from the bottom. Now, if you're not getting the exact same value of gray that I am, it's really not a big deal. You just try your best. We're learning here how to manipulate value or manipulate the lightness or darkness of a color by adding more black or adding more white. And But what we want to do next is play into the gray that we're using right now. So mix up more of this gray so you have enough that we can then add in more white to later. A smidge lighter just so that it stands out over top that gray and let's just test it out see that's perfect if we need to make it darker we can but let's start lighter and then we can darken it slowly And just again, to make it easier, I'm gonna paint the other side and the chin. And while that's wet, we can make it darker or even lighter. Because I'm even seeing here, this is identical to that. So that's where we have to be careful. Identical in value, that's what I mean. So I'm literally keeping that traceable outline, keeping it there temporarily so I can distinguish these two parts of the fox. Now, color value. You've heard me say it at least three times by now. If you're still confused on color value or you need a little refresher, 
I highly recommend you check out my creative color guide. Not only do I cover in depth my unique color methods, but also these key terms, what they mean, how we can apply it to our art, like color value, tone, contrast. So if this would serve you, my creative color guide you can find in my masterclass or on its own on my website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna take my dark gray, I'm gonna take a bit of phthalo blue, just the smallest amount of phthalo blue and blend it into that wet light gray. I'm blending this blue directly on my canvas with tiny little circular motions, filling it in about halfway, not going all the way down. I'll do the same thing on the left upper part of the chin, the smallest bit of phthalo blue, Using the same circular motion with the smallest amount of phthalo blue, I'll blend it to the right, but not all the way. I'll stop a little bit further than the center of that chin. And with straight white, I'll work white in to the far right side of the snout. and a little bit on the chin too. Now let's work on that nose, shall we? I'm gonna continue using my size one round brush and I'm gonna go with a phthalo blue and violet combo. I'm gonna mix those two together I'll mix some white with it, just a tiny bit. After testing it out, it's just a little too dark, so I'll add a hint more white to it. And what we want is a darker indigo down here, working around the black, and then a much lighter, a little bit lighter indigo on the right side, above that line. And I'm gonna use a smaller brush. This is a little too thick. Plus I used it to mix the colors, so that will also make it a thicker brush. I'm gonna use my size zero spot brush to just pick up that lighter indigo and work around the black. Now I'll go straight into this, the top of the nose on the left side, but then stop about there and then pull in some white into this. And then paint in the rest of the white on the right side of the nose. and then blend those two areas together. Voila. I love having two different colored eyes, but you can choose whatever eye color you'd like. I'm gonna go with an orange yellow on the right eye and then a blue on the, or a violet 
on the left eye. So let's mix, if you're going with the same colors as me, orange and yellow. That's cadmium yellow and orange. I'm mixing with my size one round brush. I'll add a bit of white to that. And then I'll, I'll apply it with the same spot brush, size zero Arteza spot brush that I was using. Oh boy. Very carefully around that pupil. And before that dries, I'm going to pull in just white and blend that in the far right side. I want that to be much lighter. Now this is a tiny little area that I add white to as well, but it's to the left of the pupil in the lower corner. Now make sure you get that brush clean and damp before we mix up the next color. Now for that violet eye, I'm gonna take violet and white, blend that together. That's violet and white. Like blue, it's very dominant, so what you're seeing on your paint palette may look like a light violet until you add it, and then it actually looks much darker. So add a good amount of white, and then test it out on your canvas. I'm going to take a little bit of violet and very carefully blend it into this light lavender. And I don't need much of it. In fact, I didn't even cover the whole side. I just am going to make it slightly darker. So what I'm doing here with the smallest amount of violet, I'm blending that into the far right of the left eye pupil, but then blending that and smoothing it out with a little bit more of our lavender or the light purple and also preventing it from getting too dark. Now I'll apply that same technique to the very top, to the left of that left eye pupil. Do you follow me? That was a lot. And smoothing it out again with the light purple, keeping the lower part of this eye lighter than the top. Now it's very important we get those eyes right. So step back from your painting, look at those eyes, compare them, and make sure they're symmetrical. I'm gonna do this with my black, touching up areas that I went over with those iris colors. But just so you know, that right eye is closed slightly more than the left. It could just be how the fox was designed, or maybe it's just so bright on that side from the sun. Now lately in my tutorials, I like to squeeze in an intermission or two, and that's what we'll do right now. Replace your water 
or get up and stretch or do some touch-ups, repeating some of the steps we've already done. But be sure to take a break and we'll move on. Next, we're going to work on the browns, the reddish browns that we see below the eye, right here above the insides of both eyes, to the left here of the snout, a little bit on the right side too. So let's mix up a few colors here. I have my palette knife. I'm going to mix up first a darker reddish brown with raw sienna, a little bit of permanent red, and some black. Might have added too much red there, but we'll see. Yeah, so I want to pick up a little bit of this and pull it aside to add in a lot more raw sienna. So that's a lot of raw sienna, a little bit of permanent red, very small amount of black, and that's more the color I want. Next color is raw sienna with some orange. That's raw sienna and orange. And then I want to join it to a little bit lighter orange yellow. So I'm going to take lots of my yellow ochre. These colors are dry right here and lots of yellow ochre and some raw sienna, just a little bit. And I want a good amount of that, so I'm gonna mix up a good amount. Oh, silly me, I got a little bit of blue in there, or that's violet. So I want to separate that. I don't want to mix any violet into that. Okay, and then I want to go a little bit lighter and that will be with yellow ochre and some white. So we have four colors we just mixed up going from dark to light. And I'm going to add more yellow ochre. Now these might, we might need to add some more colors into this. We may need to alter the current colors and we may need to go darker, lighter. We'll see as we, as we go. So I'm gonna start with the darkest areas around the eyes and snout. I use my size two Filbert Arteza brush. So we just mixed up five colors here. I'll pick up the second color we mixed. You know, I think we may need to go a bit darker later, but actually I'm gonna continue on with this because this will join so nicely with the light yellowish browns. And using a thin amount of paint on my brush, I want to use that flat edge of the filbert brush to start creating that fur texture, cutting at an angle around that left eye. So I'll work above the eye and I'll work below the eye
Now, once I get to here, where it angles around the snout, that's where I'm starting to see it looks a bit darker. So with the smallest amount of black, and I mean small, I'm gonna blend that into the mixture of my paint palette in a corner of it and start working down along the snout. I'll even take that, if you watch me, I will take that down over top some of that blue gray area. And then I'll start blending up. Now I'll continue on with the second color remixed with the added black. Because I see a bit of it coming out to the corner of that left eye. And I want to make that a little bit more loose because the fur kind of breaks it up. Now carefully bring this down along, just creating a thin line up and around to the far left of the nose above it. And then I'll start working around the darker areas around the left or the right eye. So I see it comes a little bit in front of the line we created here, it comes in front a little and then down on the bottom of the eye, working around it. and just a tiny bit above it. So what I'm gonna do is while that area is still wet, I wanna be able to blend it into this brown. Now I'll grab the third mixture we mixed up, the brownish orange. So just like I worked with that dark brownish red around the eye, I'll work on the outer part of that brownish red, also blending it in as I go. And what I'll do is instead of going to, I may need to take this darker, but I don't think I will. I'll just use this darker brownish orange to pull it out, just like we did over here, because that light source is coming from that side. Now this is another one of those parts where I recommend you watch me first and then try it. So as I cluster these very short lines with color mixture three, I'm creating a curved line. I'm working from left to right in a curved line without going all the way to the right. So I'm just kind of curving it around, but at the same time clustering these lines together. And also the shadow right above this dark reddish brown that we applied, I'll add this there. Now the fur on the bridge of the nose is quite short, so these are gonna be stubby short lines.
And while we have this brown, this darker version with the black that we added to it, I'm gonna nicely blend that into this line. I kind of don't wanna have this straight line right there, so I'm gonna cluster lines in that, in that corner. I just wanna blend out that bold line, so I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of this color, color mixture two with some more black, so I can blend that into the orange brown that we just applied. And that color, that darkened version of Color Mixture 2, I'll add the smallest little bit, a line that cuts into the top side of the right of the snout. I'm gonna wash off my brush thoroughly. I'm gonna pat it damp, pick up Color Mixture 3, and start blending up from that area. And very carefully with short little lines, I'll cluster them up towards the inside of that eye. So the next color, I'm gonna actually jump straight to my yellow ochre and white. That's color mixture five. And start cutting in over top that, sort of doing a little bit of blending, but layering at the same time. There's quite a good highlight on the top of that nose. So I'll skip that area and start working this way. Now this is a great base color right here, but to me it bothers me by how dark it is. <laughs> and I'm gonna just grab some white while it's wet so I don't forget it and just blend that into the bottom area where it connects with that gray. That's just straight white. I don't wanna pull it all the way up, just a little bit. And that, what we just applied, adding more white to the yellow ochre I'll add here, which is much lighter too. So let's carry on with this lighter version of yellow ochre and white and now pull it into the top of the nose. So I know I'm jumping around here, but I'm gonna wash up my brush so it's clean and damp and go back to that original color with the added black to it. And here is where I'm gonna start working on the forehead in between the ears. It kind of creates a little bit of a dip in between the ears. Leaving a cap of white behind this area will fill that in with a lighter color. I wanna work the ends of this area behind the ear, not in front.
Now working down from this area, I'll move to color mixture four. And remember, this is the yellow ochre mixture without all the added extra white. So I also see a little bit of darkness that almost creates this X. If you look very closely, there's lightness here, lightness here. When I say lightness, I mean like a lighter yellowish brown. And then, but this darker one we're using right here kind of comes down right along here. And that's what I'm trying to, trying to get. So watch me as I cluster lines around the base of both ears. It's going to peak here where I'm working and I'll leave pretty wide gaps in between these medium-sized lines. They're not as long as the fur we made on the chest. It's just a slightly bit shorter. Now I'll take those lines down the center of the forehead, again with very wide gaps. All right, great job. We are gonna move on to this yellow white. I'm gonna add white to it. So I'll make, I won't gobble up all that area of yellow ochre and white, just in a corner with more white. And we'll add quite a bit of this now around those areas that we just painted. And I'm washing my brush so I have a thin amount of paint on it so it's clean and damp. And we'll first start in between the ears and behind it, and then work down. This will go out over top some of the gray. We see some of that over top some of the inner ear hair. Okay, now I'll work behind and I might need to switch brushes. I'm gonna do that. 
Take your time if you're still working on the in-betweens. I'm gonna to move to my size one round brush and carefully get the fur behind it. I'm gonna wash off my brush, go back to my filbert brush. And go back to my lighter version of yellow ochre and white, the one we lightened up. Be careful as you're working underneath the ears because we only need to come up just a little bit into that dark gray. All right, and so this area of white, I'm just gonna cluster lines, fill in some more white, laying, layering over top some of that brownish orange bottom layer. So now I'm going to start working here carefully down along this area. And once again, I'm going to switch to my size one round brush for that. And right in this area, it sticks up a bit more. Okay. It's more vertical, this, the strands of fur. Now I'm gonna go back to my original version of yellow ochre and white and start filling in the whole rest of the area. I'll start with my detail brush working down so I get this nice wispy strands down here and then I'll probably go to my larger filbert brush after that. Now this is our yellow ochre and white color mixture five. If it's a little lighter, maybe you're just getting lost in all these yellow ochres. It's no biggie because we are still getting some light hitting this far left side anyway. Now, I don't need so much of a, a gap right here. I can cover it up with fur and connect it to the bottom area. And 
there's so little area to paint in here, I might as well just use this brush. So carefully working around that gray, I'm going to start working up this color on the face. I'm going to continue on with this color right here. And then add more white to this. And fill in the rest of the white. Oh, too thick. Even go a little bit lighter than that. So I, I just added even more white. And make sure you save that light, very light version of yellow ochre and white. We just added a lot more white to it because that's what we'll be using to add highlights and then work on this side. So with this light yellow ochre and my size one round brush, I'll cluster lines to fill in the rest of the white on the far right side of the face. Then after that, we'll add more layers on the forehead for the highlights. This comes down here like we highlighted it before. I'll just do that again with this color. And you notice how I left some white here? Well, that's actually what we'll, we'll fill this area with this lighter version of yellow ochre and white and keep this dark. Now, just a reminder to keep your brush thin with paint and damp and clean. Mixing paint with your brush is fine, but it can leave a lot of paint inside the bristles, then dry and create a much thicker brush. So I can get these nice clean strands cutting into this green background. I'm going to show you a little trick here. If you accidentally make those strands that cut into the green background too thick or just not the way you want it, 
you can actually use your detail brush as an eraser. You can pull an entirely fresh, new, clean brush and dampen it, or you just wash out your brush, make sure it's very clean and pretty damp. Then just carefully in that area, you wash away and pick up that paint you don't want there. You let it dry for a minute and you can go back and fix it up. So these highlights will just be clustered, scattered very carefully like at an angle, almost in a curved shape over top the forehead. Now we're adding details here. Every brush stroke really counts because we can really see it over top the base layers. And our goal is not to cover up the base it's just to scatter these very clean, even width and length lines over top those layers without covering them up. I'm just gonna mix up some more, adding more white to the yellow ochre and white mixture. Now I know it can feel a little inconvenient, but by all means, if you wanna prevent your brush from getting too thick, grab your palette knife, if you have one, and mix up the colors that way. Now I do use this very light yellow ochre to highlight, add additional layers on the right side of the top of the bridge of the nose. And we don't wanna miss this area behind the left ear on the side. I very carefully wanna highlight those strands with this lighter yellow ochre mixture. Now this can be tricky depending on which hand you're more dominant with. I find that it's easier to start on the inside behind that left ear and then pull my brush out into the background. This really allows me to get the tip of that strand, the thinnest point, and where I begin on the fox, the thickest. All right, creatives, how are we doing? I wanna give you another break. This is our second intermission so that you can do any touch-ups. Maybe you just need to stand up, step back from your painting, clean out your water. Maybe you also need a mental reset, a reminder to not judge yourself or your painting in this phase in the process. We're still in that ugly phase. And what good does it bring to be critical of our work, of ourselves? We learn best when we're open to making these mistakes. All right, so here I go, adding orange into color mixture number four with my size two Filbert brush. And a bit more white as well. So that's more orange and white. Let's test it out. 
So I like it. I may, I'll, it's better to go dark than too light. What we can do is add this and then add some more yellows over top of it. See how I'm pulling my brush in towards that gray just to cut in so I can still keep that beautiful texture we already applied. I'm going to leave gaps as I move to the right and then we'll fill in the white between it with a lighter yellow brown. I'm pulling this all the way up to the even over some of that green. And you know what guys, I like this color so much. I'm gonna add some of this on the other side. Just in that little area. As well as right here too. Don't you just love these vibrant yellows and oranges and reds? I'll soften out the darkness that joins to that light yellow in the lower left side of that left ear. And it's the perfect color to soften out the bold line right below the left eye. It's where we have that reddish brown joining to our very light yellow mixture. And directly above that, above that left eye, I have some leftover white, not to mention it's a little too light there anyway. So this color is another great way to blend the darks to the lights. And speaking of leftover white that I don't want to leave white, I want to cover it up, I'll use this color below the right ear and I'll fade it into that yellow ochre and white mixture. When I find a color that's the perfect medium value, I continue using it wherever I can find to join areas like behind this left ear joining it to that very light yellow. I'm going to use this yellow ochre with the added white. I'm going to mix up more for myself right now and fill in the rest of the white on this side. Now again, be careful how thick your brush strokes are getting. Mine are getting a little too thick. I also want to say that without covering up all that base layer of the brownish orange, I want to bring this light yellow ochre mixture over towards the light gray areas, not going over top, and then go back to my brown and orange base that we applied in this area and smooth it out.
Now I just feel like the fur that cuts into the green on the far left looks a little too transparent. It needs another coat to richen it up, stand out over top that dark green. So I'm going to move to color mixture 5. I don't recommend you grab the lightest yellow ochre mixture you have. It needs to be just a little bit darker. Now what we also want to do is create symmetry, making sure that the fur length is about the same is the same on the right side. So again, adding another layer of my lightest yellow ochre and white mixture for the right side, I'll carefully pull that over top that lighter green background. Now I want to look for some more joiner colors. I'm going to grab my size one round brush again. I'm going to pick up color mixture three, our orange brown. I definitely see that we can add that here. And pull it down even further. See how I'm scattering these lines so that there's quite big, large gaps in between. I'll do that in the other eye. Don't need many lines, but I still want to make sure that I have this kind of these curved lines coming out from the sides of the eye. They even cur curve out and up a little. And I want to fix this area. This looks so nice how it's been angled, but I think I can actually add some of this third mixture and cut in a little bit more to that gray. Correction, that's color mixture four, our darker version of yellow ochre. Now I'm definitely not following the reference here, but it looks right on my painting. I'm going to pull some of this orange brown into that gray, cutting over top some of that green background. Now I'm so excited, an area that I almost missed is the black above both ears on the inside. We're gonna tackle that now. So my next color is gonna be violet with white. That's just violet and white. This is going to be a medium value. I'm actually going to make this lighter than how dark it is. It's basically just black above the ear, but I'm going to draw attention to it by making it this dark to medium value violet. Now in this year, it comes down a little bit further. Now 
really pulls out those yellows in the fur. And this is, with this purple, with this violet, I'll paint this small line in at the top of the ear. Now we even see the thinnest bit of that black on the far outer edge of both ears. So with a very thin line and a steady hand, I'll create those lines with this violet. So next for this beautiful light blue that we'll be adding to the gray and white fur, lots and lots of white, little bit of phthalo blue. That's a lot of white, little bit of phthalo blue. Test it out just to be sure. I'm gonna start down here. Yep, perfect. And with my size one round brush, one little strand at a time, and it's longer down here, gets a little shorter here, and then basically about the same length on the inner ears. I don't wanna cover up all the gray, the medium and dark gray layers. I just wanna carefully layer over top of it. Now I recommend you watch me before trying it on the left of the snout. I won't cover up the inside area to the far left of the snout. I'll leave that shadow a gray, but to the far left of that, I'll cluster lines in this horizontal, long, curvy motion. I'll even bring those lines down into some of that orange brown. And making sure that this is a very light blue, I'll even add more white to it, I'll apply light strands over top the inside of the left ear without covering up all that base gray.
Now I'll do that exact same thing we just did to the chest, the left of the snout, and that left ear with just white. I'll just go in with white in my size one round brush and do the very same thing. On the opposite side, that right ear, and carefully on the chest, I'll be cutting in carefully to that light blue. Now watch me carefully here, because I won't cover up the entire lower right side of the snout with white. I'll just start the base of the nose and work out, covering up that traceable line. I don't want that there anymore. Now with the added white on my brush, I'll go into the very light blue mixture and lighten up the far left side for strands. Next, I'm going to mix up a very light gray, the smallest amount of black, lots of white, and we'll add highlights now to both eyes. This small dot will sit to the right of the pupil, layered slightly over top on both eyes. Thank you. 
And with this light gray, I'll also add the smallest little line slash dot. It's kind of right there in between where we added that darker blue violet, connected it with the lighter version. That line in between, that's where I'll add that highlight to the nose. All right, so for the next few minutes, I'll be doing touch-ups with the yellow ochre and white highlights. So we have our color mixture four, which is a darker version of that. Then we have our lighter yellow ochre mixture. So I'll be alternating between the two all along the forehead. So what I wanna do is keep that right side very light, just keeping consistent with where that light source is, while also using that darker version of yellow ochre to properly connect the lightest yellows to those brownish oranges and reds. And by the way, I wanna make a note here. At the base of the left ear, that yellow ochre comes down way too far. I need to actually use more of the darker yellow ochre mixture to pull that up so that there's not such a, a wide gap of dark gray <laughs> left there. Now I finally noticed the issue, but that highlight in front of the nose on the fur needs to join with the highlights above it on the bridge of the nose between the eyes. So very carefully getting that right lightness. I don't want it too light. I also don't want it too dark with my yellow ochre and white. I wanna bring that up in clusters of lines to the right of the bridge of the nose. Now I definitely say this highlight does not belong there. I would say negate this, don't paint it there. It threw me off. So I would say bypass that little brush stroke there or two.
Now at the very end, I love to add those accessory colors that just pull out the areas that I wanna draw attention to, like the blue on the chest. Mix up a slightly darker version of white and phthalo blue, not too dark, just a little bit more added phthalo blue so we can pull out those blues to the far left of the chest. Next, I'm going to still use my size one round brush and I'll pick up color mixture three. I'm just going to soften this area a little bit with this color, combining it with a little bit of this darker version of yellow ochre and white. Again, this is another great joiner color, and I'll start pulling it down where I need to keep some of that darkness there, that medium value in between the light yellows and the more dark yellows. At this point, I wanna remind you to step back from your painting, look at what your painting needs. Being that our light source is from the right, this color is gonna work so perfectly with the left side area, left of the snout, and around that left eye. So that's where we can really use that color. Even this little line that we have on the far right of the snout. And then I know how scary those whiskers can be, but don't worry if you just keep a thin amount of black paint on the tip of your brush. I'm using my 3-0 liner brush. And this is gonna be just with a dark gray that's white with black. Do a few practice tries on a separate canvas or on a mixed media paper. That way you feel more comfortable. So a thin amount of paint on my liner brush. And these are, these are short whiskers. Just one stroke at a time. And then I'm gonna to touch up those eyes with black. I wanna bring this line up a little bit more and this brush is actually perfect for it, this liner brush. All right, creatives, we have reached the end of our Fox painting. Don't forget to sign it. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe for more animal painting tutorials using acrylics. Have a blessed day. Bye.